NTAG Southwest. Our first presenter is going to be Senior Chief M. He's going to be going over the linguistic program. I'm going to talk to you guys about three things. Number one, what I wish I knew when I was your age. Had I known this information back then, uh, I might be even further ahead in my career. I would have probably not done some of the stuff I did. Secondly, we're not here to recruit you per se. What we are here to do is to pique your curiosity, to intrigue you, to hopefully get you to the point where you ask questions and you want to know more. So we're going to talk just wave tops, which just means topical. Uh, we're not going to go into too much details, but we want to tell you things, hook you in uh, with some interesting things uh, about our lives, what we've done, where we've been, and what we do. And the last thing is just to open your mind. I want you to consider other possibilities that, again, you might not have considered. And after the video, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. We're the, the Navy's linguists, but more than that, we are generally going to be working in intelligence. We really become cultural experts. We can travel. There's a lot of jobs that are open to us um, because of that knowledge. Understanding uh, connotation, you're not only translating the language, but you're trying to interpret the intent of that communicant in that conversation. Whether it be, you know, an operation on the ground in Afghanistan, whether it's a fleet operating in the South China Sea, we have the knowledge to make sure the reporting information gets out correctly to protect troops, real people lives, make policy decisions. So really the reporting and the briefs that we give can go a lot of places. You go through the Defense Language Institute, they build your language skills from the ground up. You are completely immersed. You're doing, at the minimum, 40 hours a week in class, which are very small classrooms, with native speaking teachers. So the teachers are extremely highly educated, their English is great, but when you step in that classroom day one, there's no more English. When that fire's lit and you really experience for the first time what it's like to be bilingual, and to go somewhere and completely never use a word of English and be able to get through a social interaction, it's a very cool experience and you have a, a better appreciation and want to learn more languages. If you wanted to go to college to learn French or something, that's great. It's, they're going to teach you the language. But, and I'll, uh, Mr. Brent Mullins, I will answer that question, but through the Navy Linguistics Program, we will teach you, we will immerse you in that culture. So let's say you're going to become a Korean linguist. You will spend time in Korea. You become an Arab linguist. You will spend time in the Middle East. We're gonna make you a regional expert and we're gonna give you that training and you will be immersed. The four languages, top four languages we need in the military are Korean, Chinese, Mandarin, Arabic, uh, Farsi. Those are the top languages. The languages can be ranged in the classes can be about maybe 18 months, 16 months, depending on how hard it is to learn. So I just want to take a moment to tell you about this program. It's a chance to become a regional expert. Life outside of the, lang um, the Navy career as a linguist, there's other opportunities for you guys to join the State Department or work for a company because that language skill is something that you don't see very much in the English speaking countries the British, uh, the English, the Australians, the US, it's one of the problems we have. All right, with that said, any questions about the linguistics program? Uh, Cause that's what we want. We want you to ask questions. If there's no questions, we'll move on and we're gonna talk just a little bit about intelligence. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself and my intelligence career. So number one, I grew up in Southgate, California. It's in the Los Angeles area. I went to UCSD, graduated magna cum laude, psychology and political science. I went to San Diego State University. While at San Diego State University, the 9-11 terrorist attack happened. Uh, I saw a Navy recruiter, a reserve recruiter on campus because I wanted to finish my master's program. And I told him, hey, I want to do cool things. I want to go to cool places and I don't want to swap the deck all day. I took the ASVAP, scored well, boom, I'm doing Intel. Fast forward a couple of years, I volunteered and mobilized, go to Iraq, all expense paid trip to Iraq, free room and board. That experience, what I learned there, the experience I got, uh, propelled my uh, contracting career. Let me just tell you, before I went to Iraq, I went to interrogator school. Before I went to interrogator school, I was working at the University of California, San Diego as a researcher. When I was working there, I was earning about $31,000 a year 
as a researcher. As an E5 in the Navy, going to interrogator school, I was already making about 55,000 with the housing allowance from San Diego. So I didn't know that military pay was competitive and good uh, compared to ac the academic sector. And so those are some of the things I wish I knew back then because what I would have done is, hey, right after college, join the military or maybe even after high school. Back then, the cost of education is not what it was, what it is today. Today, it's astronomical and it boggles the mind. Does a question, does it usually require knowing a second language to get started? Negative. If you want to go into this program, you're academically smart, you're sound moral, physical, and mental health, the Navy is going to provide the training. The other speakers are going to talk to you about the nuclear field. We're going to talk to you about, uh, if you talk to other speakers, about air rescue. There's a lot of opportunities, but the thing about the Navy, we don't need you to have training. We don't need you to have experience. We will provide you experience. We will provide you opportunities to go and see the world. What we do need is for you to be motivated, work hard, and uh, be bright. So no, you don't need to know a second language to get started. We just want to test you to see if you have the aptitude to learn a language. Now, uh, sir, would you please go to the next slide? I'm just going to take a minute to talk to you a little bit about intelligence. All I'm going to talk about today is, hey, when I give a brief, when I give a presentation, what are the four sections? How do I do that? And the last thing is, I just wanna talk a little bit about types of intelligence. So we'll put together a real world problem. So I know that one of your rival schools is Troy High School or Great Oaks. Um, if there was some sort of Hunger Games competition like thing where uh, you guys were competing against each other and let's say football or something or drill competition, let's just say football was how you guys competed against each other. The question is, as intelligence analysts, what are the things you would want to know about the rival high school team? So if I was gonna give a brief on, let's say, Troy High School's football team, I would talk to you about what do we know? What are facts? Secondly, what do we not know? The negative information is just as important as positive information. So if we, if we know that Troy High School does not run this play, or Tri Troy High School does not have this capability. It's important. Thirdly, the average analyst is gonna tell you what you already know. The good analyst will provide analysis. They're gonna tell you what we think, what we assess, and provide a confidence level. The confidence level is how sure we are of that information. And that's based on evidence. That's based on reporting. If we can get multiple streams of reporting to corroborate the information, we can have high confidence. If we have uh, imagery that's very good, maybe we have high confidence. If the information is the first thing we heard from a person that's previously reported that has been known to lie, then we could say with low confidence, we have this information. And the last thing is, what are we doing to fill these intelligence gaps? So the things we don't know, hey, what I want to know, what's Troy High School's playbook? What's in it? What are the things we're going to be doing to get that information? Now, if you look at right at the bottom of that slide, there's types of intelligence, human intelligence, things we get from humans, from people, from sources, uh, primarily the domain of the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. When we talk about signals intelligence, it's stuff we can capture electronically. Maybe we intercept a phone conversation or an email or something electronic. And that's NSA, the National Security Agency. Maybe back in the day, you guys heard about Eric Snowden. He worked for the NSA. And that's what we're talking about. We talk about imagery intelligence. Every cell phone has a camera these days. Drones have cameras. There's a lot of imagery that we can get in many different ways. And NGA, you probably aren't as familiar as the National Geospatial Agency. So we're talking about satellites. We're talking about pictures and all that stuff. The last one, I'm not going to go into so much detail, Mazin, but we're talking about the spooky high tech. We're talking about uh, radiological activity, capturing or recording seismic activity, thermal activity. There's a lot of things out there, a lot of different forms of information that we can capture. All right, so let me ask the class if we wanted to get a hold of Troy High School's playbook. What are ways we can get that intelligence? What are ways we can get that information? What do you guys 
recommend? I want their playbook, guys. Tell me. You guys are young, inventive, nefarious. What do you got? Looking at past videos. Perfect. Open source intelligence, OSINT. There's a lot of information on the internet. We can use recordings to find that, look up previous, and do the research. If we had previous games, if we had drone imagery, or it was on TV, or somebody recorded it, we can analyze it. Making friends with them, gaining the trust, outstanding. You guys are pretty nefarious. Human intelligence. We could plant sources in there. We can also do elicitation, which is just getting that information through normal conversations. You could easily have friends in that high school, and we could just ask them, maybe very subtly or maybe more directly. Bribing them. Okay, all right, we're going a little uh, more than I feel comfortable talking about. We're just talking about intelligence. So, yes, all of those things happen in the real world, but we can take pictures and maybe we can get access to it and make it take a picture we can ask somebody to take a picture maybe we can listen in on phone conversations 